uh, late night, I, uh, I heard my mom one night. You know, I used to sleep with my mom when I was young. She was crying. I heard her, you know, and I asked my mom, like, you know, why are you crying? And she never really wanted to tell me. You know, she, she never really gave it to me because she didn't want me to worry as a young kid. And, uh, you know, when growing up, you, 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 you realize stuff. And moms, moms were struggling, you know. Uh, and uh, I see my family, they were struggling. You know, my tias and all that. And uh, I always told myself, I never... Carol Flores Jr. and you're watching Snacked Up. I started boxing because my older brother, Rojo Gutierrez, he was boxing, my pops was training him, and I used to always be in the garage watching them. And so uh, I got real entertained by it. And uh, I got my first time in the ring at six years old. I wasn't even boxing yet though, I just told pops I wanted to jump in there. And so I jumped in there and I fought. I mean, the kid was a lot bigger than me because uh, they didn't have anybody like my size, a young six-year-old kid, they only had like 10-year-olds. So, you know, I got I got beaten up on a little bit, but pops saw that I had heart, you know, and that didn't really phase me. And I still wanted to keep on going in there and I enjoyed it still and it didn't discourage me. And uh, so I told him when I turned seven, I want to start fighting and he said, let's do it. And so I never looked back since then. You know, growing up in Stockton, it's tough. You got to make sure you got the right head on your shoulders. But if you if you got a goal, you got to make sure you really want it. You know, there's always going to be distractions, temptations, all that. Especially in Stockton growing up, there's all kinds of guns, drugs, gangs, violence, all that around. You know, everybody know that. That's not no secret. So you got to know what you really want. You know, you got to choose when to do what. You know, you, like I said, you got to know what you want to do. You got to really push forward for it. You know, vision it. And if you vision it and you believe it and you want to do it, you, you'll make the right choices. At the end of the day, everybody know what they're doing. They know the consequences. So it's up to you to make the decision. The day of life of me, you know, uh, during training camp, I wake up early, about 6.30 in the morning, eat a good breakfast before the gym, get a great workout in, about hour and a half, two hours, then I'll run at night. But if it's a sparring day, we'll spar early in the morning, 10 in the morning, same thing. Wake up at like 6.30, get a good meal in before this gym session so I could have something to burn, and then I run at night. You know, sometimes I throw in a little, little extra work with uh, my guy D. Graves, a little for speed, legs, you know, always the one main thing is keeping my legs strong. But after a fight, I got like about two weeks off sometimes. I wake up, you know, I, I sometimes I sleep in, sometimes I wake up at 10 in the morning, Sometimes a little earlier, sometimes later. But uh, I always, I, my big thing is breakfast. So but when I'm on my break, I'll wake up, I need a good big breakfast, and I'll chill, probably hang with pops for a little bit. You know, uh, there's always something different I'm doing when I'm on break, you know, with family, but uh, it mainly consists of eating, man, <laughs> on my break because I'm off my diet. So uh, that's the main thing I always, well, looking for my next meal, what's my next meal gonna be? Growing up as a kid, uh, I like sound a lot, and it kind of stuck with me. You know, uh, to this day, I watch Sandlot and watch the whole movie and sit there. The one that came out recently, not too recent, but a couple years ago, is uh, The Wolf of Wall Street. You know, it's a crazy lifestyle, the guy living, how he started off broke and he, and he made it. Sometimes it just, that movie teaches you, sometimes you got to learn when to give up, man. You know, he, stuck, he stood in there too little, too long and sacrificed. And it showed you, like, you may be looking out for somebody, but they don't got the same intentions that you have for you, you know? You have for yourself and you have for them, they don't have the same for you. One, one thing Pops told me, you know, uh, this is general in whole life. My best advice I got, Pops told me always, you know, uh, make sure you have good credit. You could have a lot of money and all that, but if your credit's bad, you could be stuck because out of nowhere, you never know what could happen. You know, you can't get a car, you can't get a house, you know, you're not trusted anymore. You burned your credit. And that's what a credit card in life in general, I feel. You're word as a man. You know, whatever you tell somebody, you gotta own up to it and, and do it. So, you know, that you already said that, that's your word. And if your word don't mean nothing, what's that say about you? And I see the the part the the worst advice that I've gotten, you know, I'll be some people try to tell me like don't listen to anybody. Do what you want to do. Sometimes that is good advice, sometimes it's not, but man, sometimes you have to have a good team around you and not no yes man. You know, somebody that could set you straight. And if I tell you this, if I was that person that didn't listen to nobody and did what I did, I wouldn't be where I'm at. I got a strong team behind me. I got my pops. You know, my pops is the main source there. He's the blueprint right there. So um, he's for sure the one when he leads me in the path, I try to take it as much as possible. So sometimes you gotta be humble. Check yourself and make sure like you're doing the right thing and like, make sure you got the right people around you because sometimes, man, trying to figure out yourself ain't the right move.
This is stuff I've been through se separates me from the rest of the people. Everybody got a different story that they lived and, you know, obstacles they had to go through. I feel like it's just what do you do with it and uh, how you let it affect you, positive or bad. But for me, um, you know, growing up in Stockton, lost people in my family were early in my age, you know, young, before a teenager, and uh, from, you know, all gang violence, from uh, even counting my moms, you know. So uh, with all that going on and uh, staying strong and having my boss behind me, and using that all for boxing and making sure I stay focused and all that, I feel like that separates me, man, you know, uh, in my mind. The way I think, I'm, all, I'm always thinking about the future. I always got a vision. I'm always, I always plan something else before it happens. I see it happening my way all the time. And so it, every time I step in that ring, I vision me winning in a certain way. And then, you know, no matter what, I make sure I come out with the, the win. And 16-5 uh, so far, every time it, it's, it's went my way, you know, I won. So uh, I feel like just my vision and uh, everything I've been through and I put that all in the ring, I feel like ain't no opponent tougher than my problems. So I, I feel like that's why I'm always stay on top. You know, uh, when I was a kid, you know, uh, I have a lot of family, you know, Diaz, you know, my mom's. Uh, late night, I, uh, I heard my mom one night, you know, I used to sleep with my mom when I was young. She was crying, I heard her, you know, and I asked my mom, like, you know, why are you crying? And she never really wanted to tell me, you know, she, she never really gave it to me. She didn't want me to worry as a young kid. And, uh, you know, when growing up, you, 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 you realize stuff. And moms, moms were struggling, you know. Uh, and uh, I see my family, they were struggling, you know, my tias and all that. And uh, I always told myself I never wanted that for my people. You know, I, my sisters, my brothers, you know, my future kid, you know, pops. I always, always want to make sure my people are good and they're eating because uh, that brings a stress, a stress level, I mean to make sure you got the lights on in the house and all of that, man. You know, you're just surviving, you're trying to survive. And uh, for to have that and the family, you know, it, it'll affect you, that will stay with you. So uh, that's one thing that motivates me and make sure my people are comfortable, you know, at all times comfortable. You know, no matter what you want to do in the, in the career, no matter if it's boxing or become a doctor or something, it starts off with you first, how bad you want it. You know, uh, that's where it all begins, and that's where it's going to end, how bad you want it. Because, I mean, people, I know people that are in school right now, and uh, they're, they're not going out on the weekends or nothing. They're staying inside, and they're, they're hitting the books for those finals. And me, I'm off, I got my fights coming up, man. I'm going to make sure I'm on, on my diet, make sure everything's going right. So it's all on you. You got to study, man. Like, just in this boxing game, I'm studying, watching film, you know, and, and it's all in here. I envision everything all the time. I think to myself, I envision things. You know, I'm real big on, you know, seeing the big picture, painting my own picture. So if you want to be successful, man, you just, you got to start it with yourself and make sure you got the good surrounding people around you. If you're productive doing what you got to do and you got somebody right here to the left of you, man. Not doing too much, you can either do one or two things. You can help them trying to get on your level and do what you're doing, or you got to leave them behind because they just stay slowing you down, you know? So you got to make sure you make the right decisions with the people that are in your group and in your circle. Man, the one thing I fear is, is uh, I don't like heights, like roller coasters. I'm not gonna say nothing crazy, like too deep, but uh, one thing I do fear is roller coasters, man. I could go Six Flags and I won't go on a ride. I'll just get a funnel cake or something, you know, and enjoy play some little carnival games or whatever, but I ain't jumping on no roller coaster. To be on the big stage on live TV, in front of millions watching on ESPN and all that, it, it feels great. Cause I feel like I'm telling the story while I'm fighting. I'm fighting for my city. And when I go on that TV, everybody knows that. And I'm showing the kids all that growing up here in Stockton, California, they could do something. Their options are not limited as they think they are. Just cause you grew up in this, this city it means uh, it's hard for you to make it out. You gotta do, nah. It don't mean nothing that you grew up here. You can still do what you dreamed of. And I'm the proof of it. I came just from here, just like you, born and raised, Dr. California, born and raised. Ain't nothing different between me and you. You know, that's the only thing I worked. I worked hard and, and I knew what I wanted. Ever since I was seven years old, I knew what I wanted. I was in middle school, not even middle school. I was in elementary. I was 11 years old, waking up at four in the morning and running. So I know what I wanted and uh, I tried hard for it. You know, I am every way, every day I try to get better and better. You know, it's driving me crazy. So if, if you really want to do something, man, you, you're going to do it. You know, uh, I'm from Stockton, California, man, just like you. And it was hard. I had to beat the odds. You know, me and you facing the same odds. That's what makes me feel good about being SPN. You know, uh, showing them that, hey, look at me. I did it. I want to see y'all do it. 
The best thing that happened to me, man, was boxing. It was a great path for me to take and, you know, look where I'm at now, just out of all oh, dedication and all that. So I'm blessed to be in the position I'm in, very. And, uh, you know, I don't know where I'll be without boxing. A lot of people ask me, what, what do you think you would be doing if you weren't a boxer? And that question scares me every time, you know, because I don't know exactly what I'd be doing. But I'm just glad that I, I found something that I'm, I'm good at and I'm, I love, you know, I'm, I'm taking it all the way. And uh, on the little deeper side, you know, the worst thing that ever happened to me, you know, is uh, my mom's, you know, uh, to this day, you know, of course I miss her, think of her, hoping she was here, you know, probably, advice from her and all that. But, um, you know, uh, it's just how you look at everything. You know, for all y'all out there that lost somebody to you, very close to you, you gotta look at it a different, different way. Cause uh, I learned how to look at it. I, I lost my mom at 12 years old. I was blessed enough to get 12 years with her. That's how I, I try to look at it. You know, somebody could have had four, had less, you know, not even having that much memories at four years old. You know, I got 12 years with her. So, you know, I got memories to hold on and keep on to and you know, remember her real, real goodbye. So, uh, you know, uh, but definitely the worst, worst one of all. I'm excited for 2020. This is, this is gonna be a big year. You know, uh, I feel like it's gonna be the year I'm gonna go grab that world title. You know, we're gonna be on that road. You know, uh, the competition is stepping up and I feel like I'm the best when the lights hit and uh, a good opponent is in front of me. That's when I'm gonna show my full potential. And uh, I'm ready to shock the world and, you know, show them everything. Show them what the Stockton kid is made of. Been undefeated, man. It feels real good. Feels good. Gotta code it though. Feels good, but uh, I got a four road ahead of me, so I'm staying hungry. I'm staying ready. You know, uh, this is expected. You know, uh, it don't feel crazy or anything to me because uh, me and Pops been working for, at this for years, so I feel like our plan is working out where where we're supposed to be at. This is what uh, needs to happen. So uh, 2020, when I go grab that world title, uh, I'm gonna feel even better. But you like like I said, this is all in the plan, all in the blueprint. We've seen this happening already, so. Uh, we're gonna make sure we keep on going. Never be satisfied, always want more. Never content. You know, we always wanna go higher and higher, right? Cause if we do made our, reach the goal, we're gonna make a new one. You know, so we're always gonna be pushing. January 11th, be there, Stockton Arena. We're gonna have a bobblehead day with the Stockton Kings. You know, the first 2009 people there get one. You know, I had one at uh, the ballpark was the Stockton Ports. They gave out a thousand, a lot of them, they went real fast. You know, I know a lot of people that didn't get to pull a bubble ahead of mine. So, uh, you know, you be there, I'll be right there signing them, all of them, you know, hoping I could be there long enough. And, uh, you know, I'll find it in February, coming up real soon. You know, we ain't got an exact day yet, but stay tuned. <laughs> loved or feared, you know, um, you know, I'd rather be loved. You know what I mean? Uh, I, Cause me, in other words, people that want to be known as fear, they want the respect and, you know, all that. But I'm good with being loved, you know, it's good vibes. You know, when I'm around, I like good vibes. You know, I could talk to somebody and know that we're on the same page. You know, they they feeling me like I'm feeling them. You know, they got me like I got them. So uh, that's, that's for sure the top one right there. Look. I'd rather be stranded in the jungle. I feel like I have a lot more opportunity to catch up than to eat. You know, I feel like I'll survive longer in the jungle and the desert because it feels like it just seems empty right there, you know. Uh, but of course, it's probably more risk, a little more risk in the jungle, but it feels like it's straight dead. Nothing's around you. I mean, I, feel like, I don't know, for some reason, I feel like I'm gonna last longer in the jungle. I, I love the heat. You know, I do real good with the heat. You know, cold I don't do good with. You know, I, I get cold real fast. I start shaking. You know, uh, so when, when the heat, I could train in 90 de degree weather. Of course, I'll be high, but it feels good. You know, I'll run outside 90 degree, 90 degree weather. And something about the heat always attract me. I love the warm weather.